Hey guys, it's Trice here, formerly known as Mr. Jang Triple Zero, which I'll explain the ordeal later in this video. Back with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Vizier Fulcrum GS402. This vehicle is an attempt to enter the heavily competitive muscle car market that was at its peak in the 1960s. This car has the power, looks, and comfort of being a solid competitor in this market. The styling is partially based on the first gen Pontiac GTO and Dodge Charger RT. And about muscle cars, what's interesting is that the top speed of these vehicles is not what you expect to be. I'll explain all that throughout this portion of the video. It has a lap time of 1 minute 30 seconds, 33 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track, at 2 minutes 29 seconds, 24 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 130 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 6.07 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a 402 cubic inch or 6.6 .6 liter V8 engine that produces 357.8 horsepower and 410.6 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of an oil crisis causing 7.5 miles per gallon and weighs 3,784 pounds or 1,716.4 kilograms. And for the market, it does great performing in the bustle car market, it also does well in the pony and family sports premium markets, and it does fare in the fun premium car market which is weird how they ranked it right there. Before I talk about the specs of the Fulcrum, I'll explain what happened to my old channel. On April 26, 2021, I received an email from YouTube at 7.38 AM stating that my channel has been terminated due to spam, scams, or commercially deceptive practices. I've never had any previous strikes on my channel, which I had that account since February 23rd of 2011. I tried to appeal the ban, which of course, they denied it, saying it violates the terms of service, and that was it. All those 430 plus videos of The Sims 3, Automation, Beeman G Drive, PCBS, some PS4 games, and a few IRL videos are all gone. Fortunately, I was able to recover a good chunk of my recent videos since 2017 and re-uploaded them on this channel. All the 1,130 subscribers, the 1.1 million views, channels I subscribe to, playlists, like videos, and even the favorites playlist when I was a thing back in the day, they have been erased because of this extremely unnecessary decision. Even though I can recall at least two videos that were a bit scummy on possibly violating the TOS, but that shouldn't be the reason to ban me. They could have just given me two strikes in those videos and make that a harsh reminder for me to not do that again. Anyways, let's try to get back on track with the specs of this vehicle. So for the panel material of the Fulcrum, it's made out of steel, regular steel for ladder chassis, made out of galvanized steel for chassis material. With a front launch due joint engine placement in both the front and rear suspensions use a solid axle coil from the front of back. For the engine, it's a V90 degree V8 engine made out of cast iron with the family capacity set to 113.1 millimeters and a stroke capacity at 102.1 millimeters, which gets the family engine size for the big block series at 8,206 cubic centimeters or around 8.2 liters with push rod headers also made out of cast iron. For the crankshaft, it is made at a cast iron with the comrades at heavy duty forge and the pistons at regular forge with the variant capacity set lower down to 104.8 millimeters and a stroke at 95.5 millimeters, which gets to this engine size at a 402 cubic inches or 6,589 cubic centimeters or around 6.6 liters. For the compression, it is set at somewhat of a below normal 8.0 to 1 ratio with the cam profile increased to a 57 with the quality also increased to a plus 5 to reduce the drop in the RPM and to also reduce the amount of valve flow that really takes effect at the engine. It kind of sucks building old school engines from like the 60s where you get a buttload of valve flow and you can't do nothing about it but increase the quality or make us do a racing cam profile, which I didn't want to do. So no turbos didn't even exist or superchargers at the moment. So we're the fuel system. We're using a four barrel twin carburetor setup with a performance intake running on leaded fuel, regular leaded fuel with the fuel mixture set to a 13.2. The ignition timing jumping up quite a bit to a 7 and the RPM limit set to 5,000 RPM. For the exhaust, we got some tubular headers of dual exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 57.1 millimeters, which is around 2.25 inches, with the only muffler is a baffled for the first one, and that's it. 
For the drive type, our only option is that we got a rear drive setup of a manual 4 speed with the top speed set to 130.1 miles per hour. Even though the estimated top speed here is at 172.1 miles per hour, but if you do increase the top speed to what it is right here, you get a significantly increased 0 to 60 to 7.5 seconds. And I kind of mentioned about how muscle cars back then where it has like a low top speed for like the Chevelle, Pontiac GTO, Challenger, Charger. It's like it has like a top speed of around like right around here. 120, 125, 130. And when you're about to reach that top speed, like if you're in a video game like Gran Turismo Forza and the car wants to just keep on going. Everything all stock wants to keep on going. It's like if that top speed isn't suitable for that type of car. <laughs> but for the sake of realism, 130 it is for now. Probably in the future, put it up to 200 miles an hour for a high end build. For the tires, we're using radio sports compound tires with the front tire would set to 235 millimeters and the rear at 265 millimeters, running on some 14 inch steel rims. For the brakes, they're pretty uncommon for these types of vehicles. We're using solid disc two pistons with this size set, maxed out to 275 millimeters, and the rear is also a solid disc on a drum brake. With that size set to 255 millimeters, it's also a two piston with the pad type increase it up to a 64, which leans it more towards the race setting. So going on with the interior of the vehicle, we got no convertible thanks to the 4.2 update, where we got two seats front and back, which makes it a four seater in total with a premium interior and premium AM radio. And with the steering safety and all that good stuff, we got hydraulic power steering with no traction aids whatsoever with advanced 1960s safety standards. And lastly, for the suspension of the vehicle, Pretty much typical for a 60s vehicle, standard springs with gas model 2 dampers and past sway bars running on a normal preset. Despite a small amount of problems in here, such as the front brake force being too low, short gearing, engine bay being full, brake fade, wheel spin, clearance issues, let's export this to Bimichi Drive and test this vehicle out. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA to go to there and have an agenda being an American muscle car here. So taking a quick look at this vehicle, we got a big ass set of brake lights, turn signals, and reverse light along with a red reflector in between where the logo goes right here with the words Fulcrum and GS standing for Grand Sport with this vehicle. With our two exhausts, 1960s California license plates here. And for the side, not a whole lot the side here except for the door handle. That's chrome, chrome side view mirror and the 402 high performance badge that goes right here which 402 stands for the cubic inch size of the engine and high performance meaning well it's a high performing engine pretty much poking at like some high-end muscle cars that has like these types of badges so going on the front this slightly screams Pontiac GTO a little bit with the headlight placement and whoops and the grill placement too you got the headlights that somewhat resembles the GTO a little bit with the hood of the vehicle you got your scoop because why not? And interior is going to be a pretty simple one. You got your big ass plush seats right here with a lossiness of textures with the steering wheel, column shifter, dashboard, kind of with the shifter and everything else. Even though these seats are vanilla 3D fixture seats in automation, but oh well. I mean, seats are seats, the interior is the interior, so pretty much have to play it like that. So right now at the stretch of highway while I'm at it, we're going to be doing some basic performance tests with this vehicle. For our test we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a 0 to 62 acceleration test, second a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly a top speed run, which I guarantee you of how powerful and big this engine is, and how low of a top speed this vehicle is set to, I guarantee we'll reach it without any problems whatsoever, just, just watch. So right now, start with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, now. Going into our first gear. And shifting into second gear is going to be right before the toll booth. 0 to 62 in 6.29 seconds at 302.304.22 uh, feet. Sorry about that. So for the brake test, get it to around. It's showing 61. So going up to now it's showing 62. So brakes now. And no ABS. We slide and we end up here. 62 to 0 in 3.24 seconds of 138.90 feet. No ABS with this heavy vehicle seems expected times and distance wise, but with how this vehicle doesn't have ABS, you have to be careful how you brake. You can't just slam on the brakes or you'll be like in this position. You gotta like pump on the brakes or just brake early so you don't lock up the tires and spin yourself out. So for a top speed run r effect, I also kind of noticed here, look at the bottom of the screen, I got the ECS on, they're like, this vehicle isn't equipped with like, trash control, ABS, ECS, none of that for some odd reason. Fourth gear, watch, look at this, fourth gear, 110 miles an hour, 120, and 130. <laughs> 
This is pretty much the anatomy of like every single old school muscle car. The top speed was like super limited with this vehicle. I don't know if it's because it was, like, it was a safety issue, like the tires or you know, crash into a wall at around 200 miles an hour or something like that. I don't know why they limited it to like this amount. But anyways, it's pretty boring being at around 130 miles an hour. Let's just stop our vehicle at around zero miles an hour by crashing in this gantry. So 130 miles an hour of this collision, a direct impact into this gantry pole here. So hide the UI at the Alt U button on my keyboard. So down to 16. We'll go go to 16 to 100. So get ready to unfreeze physics now. 200 times and here it goes to front. Really got ourselves in and the pole is through the seats. And the back seats, there's a seat flying out and that's the rear bench seat. Everything's flying out. Look at this, man. Damn Gantry, look at all this. So, full time. Oh, my tire. Oh, hold up. That tire's gonna... I thought it was gonna land the other side of the road, but now it is. And it's gonna land in the middle, in the median. No, it's not. It's gonna be bouncing on road and everything else in general. So, like... No, 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 no. Let's F set it right here because we got this around the pole and we... Whoa, we whipped that bitch. Look at this, man. Just imagine this. You got the rear of the vehicle that is kind of janky. We got this loose polygon in the back right of the vehicle. So just look at here, look at here, look at here. There's the front of the vehicle. <laughs> Even look at the front, look at how bent this thing is. Well, it goes straight and then like at a 90 degree angle being pushed to my right here to not like see the front of the vehicle. Now you'd be seeing the side of the vehicle. And if you look towards the left side of the vehicle, you'll be seeing the front of the vehicle. <laughs> that is like super duper weird. How about an interior view so this is the interior view unchanged everything i hit the four button which brings me to the relative camera view and this is what i get what if i get in and oh my god this is okay this is sickening already so passengers drivers everybody would have been dead because we got the seat right here can i grab this so seat and this vehicle's life i missed so let's stay on this map here and we're we'll doing a time trial run at west coast usa let's do like a mid-sized race probably a street circuit maybe so let's do the long street circuit of West Coast USA, and we're doing at least, uh, let's do two laps here. What was the first vehicle? Can it, it's probably gone. Because I think what I did before, I think it was either the JPS mail truck or something else. So anyways, let's do it in the noon hours and take you to the starting line of the street course right now. So here I am set up way over here behind the start and finish line. I think this is the pit road too of this here time trial, but I don't know. And also with this here street course right here, this is a modded time trial, which you could find this in the BMG repository. You could just probably search up like West Coast USA street course, street circuit, something like that. And you'll find it right then and there. So right now, since it's a way over here. Let's get ready to start off this time trial here in three, two, one, rev it up, go. And yeah, there we go. The pure American bosses squealing out the tires and bringing out in the second gear into the third gear and into our first corner. Let's not lose it. Especially me being back after three weeks of automation BBG content thanks to my previous termination of the Mr. Jack Triple Zero channel. And what a horrible corner I was in. So as you see there, I crossed the start and finish line and even completed one lap there. And we are in the second lap. So technically we're doing one lap of this course. One lap, and we'll probably go somewhere else. Probably the full racing circuit on the actual racetrack of this here time trial, or this here map, and... Marika. Despite body damage, we're still doing okay. Yeah, we're still doing okay despite the body damage. We're not auto-steering and everything, but what a surprise. I thought that type of collision will be pulling to the right, left, wherever, and hard left. Normally, on the short course, you'll be making a hard right into there, and that's the, where the start and finish line will be located, right back there. Alright, coming to our first hard corner to the right. Lock up on the brakes, because how strong these brakes are. I think it's more in the front brakes, I believe, if I'm right or wrong. How about this here slalom? Nope. Damn, my absence has really come to me. And I'm really shifting hard to the left up here because I damaged the steering alignment thanks to my atrocious driving of not being on here for a while. And this is the real killer up ahead because this is a blind ass corner that takes you left and takes you right and takes you to the wall. God damn it. Impact detected stopping car of a 1960s vehicle. And I was stupid enough to know that this was a turn. I busted out the damn radiator. Hashtag Radiator Springs, hashtag Lightweight McQueen, and first time got a back-end collision. 
and a tire that is lost. Well, for the first time in driving and showing off an automation Beam and G vehicle in freaking weeks, and I can't steer to the left, we're gonna get a very, very atrocious lap time around a 310 minute mark. So, right here, hit the wall again and the wall again. Three minutes, 12 seconds, 51 milliseconds. The drivers and passengers have been ejected, son. So what was my first vehicle that I done here? It was the bail truck, the same day edition where I had 700 horsepower out, 720 or 740 horsepower, which was a remastered second version of the original GMPS mail truck that had a Volvo modular engine, an inline five engine in that mail truck. So as with this vehicle, can't do any more driving, banging up because look at the engine smoke and look at where we're at right now. And these two seats that have been randomly ejected for some odd reason, this was perfectly... <laughs> This was perfectly standing upright for some odd reason. Let's just bring this down. Can I bring it down, son? Well, for some odd reason, I can't grab the seat, so whatever. All right, so we'll do one more tie trial before we end it off somewhere. I'd like Brutal Sulper somewhere. So let me see if we can try a different map here, such as the Hirochi Raceway with the short race circuit mode. Are we doing same thing, two laps in the noon hours? Let's do late noon hours. So let's change it up a little bit. So hopefully I can beat a lap time of 2 minutes 53 seconds with this vehicle. So take you to the starting line of this here racetrack right now. So here we are at the start and finish line. We got all green lights at the top, so let's just rightfully ignore that. And we are back around uh, six feet behind the starting line. So right now, let's start off this year time trial off in three, two, one. Get a fair launch. Good. Around 2,400 RPM and still spin on the tires. And hopefully keep this fairly centered along this year apex at around 70-something miles an hour. A little bit of mild under steering in that corner and break here. Even right wholly near over rev. I would say the brakes feel a little bit too strong with this vehicle. Around 40-50% braking power and we got minor lock up here. And look at this, a lot better than before because we got all this space, all these life and vegetation around me. So if I make a mistake, I'm gonna just crash and nearly oversteer and just crash out into the grass and not into a wall. If I do crash into a wall, then I probably suck. I probably suck after my three big return ice or drift. Not too bad, not too great. Around 80% of strength right there. The brakes had also locked up the tires again. Usually around like 70s, or not a high study. Maybe like 80, 90%, almost 100%. That's where you're going to start skidding your tires. Almost is how cars work back then about ABS, like where you do lock up at around 70% braking power. So pay attention to the bottom left. With the steering wheel, throttle, clutch, all that input in the bottom by the G-Force counter. Let's see right here. 50, 60, 70. 71 and oh my body jiggle so around 70 percent that's where the vehicle just locks up right there for around 275 millimeter front brakes two pistons and 255 in the rear also two pistons i don't know if it's really expected for a vehicle like this but i don't really know and also the vehicles jiggle like this it's like every automation vehicle export a beam and g it just does that for some odd reason i don't know if it's because of like the node strength or what and not only that, this transmission is somewhat giving me some pain in my ass. It's like every time you lock up the tires, it just instantly downshifts and then instantly upshifts down to like a very low RPM, like right around there, around 2700 RPM. It's not really at its, uh, at its peak right there where you start building up more power, thus really making optimal power and cone. I ate a cone for breakfast. Was doing okay until I hit a damn... Um, um, Scott? Are you kidding me? I'm blocking up with the cones! The damn cone just ruined up my lap. Are you kidding me, man? I swear to just pull a drift. Make myself happy. Pull a drift, I said. Not that happy about it. Well, since I spin out, let's just half fastfully reverse this. So let's reverse speed. Probably around like 40 miles an hour. Uh, 41. So we're gonna get a lap time here with the cone sticking out through the grill at the bumper at a 1 minute, 44 seconds, 160 milliseconds, which was 19 seconds worst compared to my first lap, and we don't beat first place time of a 3 minutes, 9 seconds, 238 milliseconds. First place car is the overpowered fire truck, which was in 2020, almost a year and a half ago, which that was a... 37 or 3800 horsepower fire truck which i no longer have access to that video thanks to my termination so i don't have any footage of that fire truck again i'll probably remake it sometimes in the future like a remastered version so anyways free roam crash to the back end of the vehicle into this wall because i suck at driving.com and there you go 
The back seat's completely exposed. The front bumper is right there. Impact detected stopping car. Can I grab the cone? Um, let me break here. So why do I have no longer have like... Oh, here we go. You gotta be like at a damn certain spot to like grab the... Here we go, here we go. Cone. Oh my god. So the cone is... I gotta F7 it to get the cone away from the vehicle. There's the cone. So there's the vehicle. There's the damage. Back end's pretty bad. Sides. Front. All good stuff. Not a whole lot. So let's respawn this in the air for no reason whatsoever and take this down somewhere to a uh, brutal slope here and see if this American vehicle is the cause of the global oil crisis years later. So here we are at Brutal Slope at the ramp portion of the map here. So let's get ready to skateboard ourselves down the top of the ramp here and get a better 0 to 62 time in 4 seconds, 17 milliseconds at 160.68 feet. And here we go, red line, 150. Beyond 6,000 RPM over rev risk, 170. Engine torque reduced. Get ready to cover your eardrops. About over rev damage. That kind of scared me. 220, 230. And we are in first gear, and we are going 250. 251 was the top speed, and 195 mile an hour is our uh, exit speed, and we're level. Not anymore. We're going to be face planning very hard here, real soon. It's going to take a break. And yes, here we go. Braking really puts the car down. So stop here. Get down to 60 times slow mo. Go to the free cam, hide the UI, and do something right here. So, right here, add to 100 times now. Front end, there goes the tires. It goes the back of the body going up and the middle of the body, which I think that is a transmission or the seats, maybe? I think it's the seats or something just going out and glitching out with the blue polygons and everything. There goes the door handle. Can I grab the door handle? As yes, again, I can just yeet that till it breaks the game. So, full time. And go back to regular cam. And there is the vehicle right then and there. There goes the tire and a bunch of other debris, which is which are the seats, more seats, more stuff, and another tire in the distance. Oh, uh, that's the license plate. This is a goddamn license car. Okay, get tire eat me. Ouch. Most of that's going to keep on rolling, so can't grab it for some odd reason. So here is the vehicle. Completely mangled to oblivion. We got the front of the vehicle. So interior-wise, the engine is in our face. We need parts of suspension, the drivetrain, all that in general. So damage-wise, the front of the vehicle, it's completely unrecognizable. Even the sides of the vehicle, but the rear, you got loose polygons that just thrown it outward like... This here. This thing has become a murder weapon if you, um, shank somebody with it. And not only that, has this going off because impact detected stopping car for some odd reason for a 1960s vehicle, which I shouldn't exist with this type of technology for the hazard to go off in a vehicle to park for a 1966 vehicle. I mean, this is kind of ridiculous, but who even cares? It's a game, right? All right, last part of the video, let's skateboard ourselves down the top of the hill here and get ourselves wedged down and first of all, get a 0 to 62 time, see if 0 to 62 time changes when we go down the grass here. And a little bit different of a 4.25 seconds of 153.64 feet. And not only that, we are over roughing yet again and we're getting ready to crash her down to the little wedge thing, which is basically a square block where you get an interesting wedge-shaped vehicle or wedge-shaped look of your vehicle and the engine is dead, 220, 230. And I'm guessing impact speed would be around 250 miles an hour, 251, 52 exactly. I'm thinking impact speed, 253. So slow this down, weigh them out, and get a camera going. All right, here we go. Instead of showing the wall right here, let's just merge ourselves in like so. Or merge ourselves in and just take a look at the vehicle as a whole. So here we go. 100 times, and front, and still front, and almost perfectly wedged. Oh my god, so there goes the bumpers, the seats, the debris, the everything, full time. There's the seats, flying around, and there's a car, the seats are bouncing, and there's the seats into the wall, that seat is gonna keep going down, and down, and, uh, where you at? Down, and down, and down, and still down. So it's F7 right here to get the aftermath destruction, so here is the vehicle, whoa. So again, hazards going off because impact detected stopping car for some odd reason. And overall, almost perfectly wedged the vehicle at like a 40, 50 degree angle right here. The back end kind of survived, but you also got the loose polygon here. And I think a chrome piece or a... Uh, it's a chrome piece. I thought it was like a legit hole through the body of the vehicle with the taillight placement. But that appears to be a chrome piece. It's interesting. But anyways, that is the fate of the vehicle. Wedged, almost perfectly wedged, by like 90% wedge, but sucks we couldn't get 100%, but hey, it got wedged, so can't be upset about that.
So that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive with the Vigier Fulcrum GS402. For my two to almost three week return from this new channel for Miss Jack Double Zero to tries, well, it's worth it. Just coming back to what I usually record and the games that I enjoy. While the overall build took me like a week or so to actually make this type of vehicle, especially the back end, it took me a while to like think of like the back end. The front wasn't so bad, the back, yeah, it took me a while on that. But it is a shame that my old channel did in fact got terminated, which you can search like on the web archive, you just search up my name, like HTTP, user slash, Mr. Triple Zero, all that good stuff. You just see like my old videos, my old banner, my old profile pic, videos, some of them, and that was pretty much my channel back then. But nowadays, since I got a good chunk of my automation to BMG and my other videos from the past couple years, at least all hope isn't lost. I'm still keeping my head up despite that termination, but I still got this in the bag. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up and signing out.